Well, you may be wondering, what's George up to now? Well, if you're as curious as I am, and you know we've been kind of harping on thermal energy, and I just want to answer some basic questions. I mean, first of all, can I control it? Can I control my input? I got that under control. Can I control the output or the loss? And if I can do that, can I change or can I have an effect on my efficiency? And does that efficiency have an effect on my process? Well, I'm going to answer all four of those and probably a buttload of others. Can you probe in the old scarecrow made out of buckeye but ancient corn and was bottled up? Well, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George, the channel that dares to unlock the mysteries of home distilling. And so much more. Uh, today we're going to work on, as the intro already indicated, we want to answer some basic questions because I have a theory. Um, and as you well know me by now, that I've already been through this, so I know the answer, but I don't want to give you the answer up front. Let's walk through this because it's the understanding of the process that is so important. And oh, by the way, you may recall this. Um, once I've got that in there, of course, you Yeah, I've... It, Holy shit! It, it, look, it happens. It happens, yeah. So uh, I have since put some pins in the side of that to uh, secure that uh, the bottom of that filter because evidently it was the heat of the charcoal going in that melted my wax, at least made it soft, and then the weight of it hitting the bottom of it, and it, and then when I went to shake it, it, yeah, you saw what happened. So I'll put some pins in the side of that to hold that. But I continue to use the uh, the wax uh, just to make sure that I can create that seal that I can, of course, just heat up and remove. You can see how easily it does come apart. Okay, um, I, I've got a lot going on, but let's take this on a step by step. You know, when we operate our, we're going to we'll talk about stills in particular. Okay, when we operate a still, what are we actually doing? Um, besides all of the other stuff that we are already aware of, and we already are, we're familiar, we know how stuff works, we know why it works, and we have total control. Uh, the one area that we have control over, or at least we think we have control over, is heating a still up and then operating it, which is introducing energy. Uh, create a thermal energy um, and then the control of that thermal energy on the way out. So what that is, is that is actually inputting energy and then controlling that energy on the output, which is the loss of thermal energy that we control so that we can condense from a high temperature vapor to a lower temperature liquid. Okay, I mean, that kind of makes sense. That's, that's it in a nutshell about operating a still because we're actually controlling thermal energy. Well, one of the things, one of the aspects about thermal energy is that it doesn't care who you are. Uh, it has basic properties and thermal transfer takes place no matter what you do. Uh, but there are some things that we can do to try to control that thermal transfer. Uh, and so... If we're losing thermal energy in BTUs, which is a measure of thermal energy, uh, if we're losing more than we can put in, what happens to our end result? Well, of course, you just kind of never get there. Um, if we're losing half of what we're putting in, uh, our end result is also affected because it just takes longer to get there. So if we can reduce the amount of energy we're losing where we don't want to lose it, so that we can control the energy loss where we want to control it, which is in our condenser, well then, the efficiency of our system goes way, way up. Our process goes way up. Now, not to mention the associated cost with inputting that energy. Now, that's what it makes no difference whether you're using butane, uh, a propane burner, whether you're using electric, or whatever source you're using to input that energy thermal energy, um, if you can control its natural loss, well then you go a long way of improving your efficiency and of course driving down your cost. Uh, not to mention saving time, which is an issue. So I've got my still laid out here. Uh, this is a standard eight gallon kettle from Brewhouse. Uh, they are reminiscent to the very, very similar 
Uh, as a matter of fact, they're universal. They got a universal lid, which so mile high still, a brew house lid will fit on it. A mile high lid will fit on a brew house still. They're all the same size. Um, but this is probably more familiar to most people than some of the 50s or 100 liter stills I have laying around or your three gallons. This is probably more familiar to most folks. Um, but believe it or not, the process is still the same because it's all basic. Uh, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a thermal blanket. Uh, well, a, a thermal resistant blanket uh, to wrap around the outside because I know, I know that depending on, see the way thermal energy transfer works is it's a formula based on the temperature inside the coefficient of thermal transfer of the material, the thickness of the material, and the temperature difference between the inside and the outside is the way you can determine how many BTUs you're actually losing. But that's a long way to get there. Uh, I just figure I could run some tests, like, you know, heat it up without, and then heat it up with, and compare that. And I can determine uh, an efficiency rating increase. Uh, based on using insulation. Here's how we're going to do this. I've got a sewing machine and I'm no seamstress, but we'll go through that. Uh, I'm not, I won't bore you with the whole process, but most of it. I've got some, uh, some thick material uh, because it has to also be heat resistant. And if you use nylon or something like that, of course, when it gets really hot, what's it do? It melts. Uh, and it will stick to the side of your kettle, so be cautious. Make sure you use something just, a, a good burlap would be perfect. Uh, this is about as thick as burlap, but it's just standard cotton. Uh, and then I went out and I purchased, <coughs> I paid $22 for this. This is an R6.7 um, insulation that goes around a water heater. And uh, this is plenty uh, and we'll decide in just a little while how much we use and how we do that because we got to make some measurements uh, I need to know how Far it is around the outside of this how far it is around the outside here And then how I'm actually going to put this thing together That's why I got my whiteboard out here so I can do all and I'll do all that on my own But the real it's real simple the measurements are the diameter times pi will give me the distance around the outside so I'll take these two and I'll draw up, you know, and it will cut it and you know. Yeah, now I'm taking some measurements just so I can get my materials cut out. But I wanted to, I w I wanted to pop in and um, explain why this is, here, uh, bottom line, well, why is this important and why is this beneficial for me? Well, if you can control your environment um, physically, well then you can, wh whatever method you use to control your heating process becomes much, much more efficient. Uh, I get this more often than not. Uh, a lot of times, okay, whether you're using a, and, and this is an example of a pulse width modulator. It's a digital pulse width modulator for 240 volt, as a 240 volt controller. Uh, and this is, uh, I'm in the midst of building this one. This is a, the PID. Um, and, and they both work extremely well. Um, but the challenge is, is that I, I, it's either one or two things. I, most of the response I get is, like, George, that thing is just absolutely great. It works. It's, it's perfect. It keeps me within two tenths of a degree. Bop, 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 bop. Well, those are instances where their external, their physical environment uh, is under control. Um, and for those of us, and then there is a portion where uh, it's, they have such challenges. Uh, just trying to get a balance of temperature. Um, well, it, there are a lot of things that can do that. One is uh, by messing with the parameters in a PID controller, of course, uh, wiring your uh, pulse width modulator incorrectly. I mean, there's a bunch of things that could go wrong, but let's say, for instance, everything is right. Um, but if you're losing more energy than you're putting in, what is your controller, regardless of the control source you use, uh, what is your controller trying to do? Your controller is trying to balance a temperature. Uh, it can only balance the temperature if you can control your physical environment and you're not losing more energy than you're putting in. Or you're not losing a amount of energy that makes it impossible to maintain. Does that kind of make sense? Well, I, yeah, it should make sense. So um, a lot of times a challenge with a control, 
regardless of the control mechanism you use in order to control the heat going into your still, is going to be directly affected by how much heat you're losing uh, that you're not controlling. Uh, and remember, where are we controlling heat loss or that thermal energy transfer? Where are we controlling it? We're controlling it in the condenser. That's where we want to control it. Um, and we want to resist it as much as possible prior to the condenser. Therefore, we have a balance of temperature in our system and we're able to control the thermal energy going in. I, I can't say it any simpler than that. Uh, sometimes a controller is not the solution to heat loss problems. A controller is much, much more efficient if you can control the physical environment of your system. Now, right, let's, let's, let's move on. Well, several, several measurements later, <laughs> um, and now I'm just cutting the insulation to fit the outside of the kettle. Yeah. So you see I've got my insulation cut out, and that wraps right around the pot, and I've got the angles on the ends here because, of course, the pot doesn't go straight up. It goes up and it curves. So I want to get a good seal, and then I've got my material cut. Oh. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Velcro on the end so that once I wrap it around, I can secure it. Yick, 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 yick. I kill me. Uh, no, uh, I've got this thing ready just about, but I want to test it to make sure that it fits around. So, um, and that I figured the easiest way to do that is I just use a regular staple, a stapler. Uh, and I just ran staples all the way around the outside here, uh, in every couple, uh, every three or four inches or so. And what that does is it makes it the blanket that I want without it falling apart. You know, it's, it's just that way I can lay my kettle down. And then wrap this blank. Look at that. That's going to be amazing. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll have to cut holes out for the handles and, of course, for the heater element. But uh, we'll get to that. Yes, it's possible. Just about anybody can sew. Not very well, but it works. Well, the blanket's finished. Uh, yeah, I tell you, it, it, you know, it looks like ass, but uh, it turned out not too bad. And I'll tell you what I did learn. Um, there is a lot of skill involved when it comes to using a sewing machine. Um, but you can muddle your way through it. Um, I've, I've got the whole open there. I made an access for the heater element. And I've got, here's my access for the handles. Let me just put this on here and show you what it looks like. Hold on. Well, it's not perfect, but you know what? It really does serve the purpose. Um, I've got my access port for my uh, heater element, uh, and I've got a slot here for this handle, and one on this side for this handle. Uh, it, and this does actually come up a little bit, so it comes around the top of the lid. Um, I've got a, a few more adaptations to try to tighten this up a little bit, but it, it doesn't have to be. It's, it's fine the way it is. The last thing I'm going to do, though, is I've, since i got enough materials left over, plenty as, by the, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to make a pad that goes on the bottom because, you know, we do also lose thermal energy from the bottom. Uh, but through heat conduction, it'll conduct from here to the whatever surface this thing is sitting on. So I'm going to do that as well before we get into our testing. Stay tuned for the next one, and we're going to get into some testing and see what we can figure out and shoot, raise some efficiencies. Happy distilling.